I'm a little discombobulated here tonight. I keep thinking I was supposed to be somewhere Sunday night. And, uh, and I wasn't here, and I can't figure out where I was supposed to be. I'm not used to not having church on Sunday night. Anyway, I want to thank all the sweet people that were so, so kind and so involved with our friend Sunday for all the extra hard work that was done. Thank God for all the, the, make, the cleanup crew and the setup crew. For Elaine and Brenda, for uh, Frank, for Michael, all the folks that cooked and all the folks that served. Appreciate it. It's a lot of hard work that goes into that. And uh, just very thankful that all of you were so kind to do that. We have a lot of things to pray about. Uh, Sister Joanne Etchison is Sister Carmody's mom. Had a stroke Sunday night. And she's in North Florida Regional. They're trying to figure out what to do. And, uh, and we need to pray. And Sister Carmody was also taken to Shan's Hospital with severe pain in the back and hip. And they haven't been able to find out yet what's wrong with her. We need to pray. We need to pray for Larry Kester. I know he's here, but he's, he's, he's not a happy puppy in the fullest sense of the word. So we're glad that Brother Larry's here. And we've had so many wonderful answers to prayer for Andrea's uh, little baby girl. So many things have been fixed and healed. She has a couple more things left to be done. So just keep praying about that. And now I'd ask you to just stand. Phil and Janice, glad to have you home. I said you were already, you got two times. You got glad to have you home. I'm reading two portions of scripture. First will come from Hebrews 11. And uh, man, we had a wonderful crowd here this morning, Sunday morning. Some of the greatest preaching I ever heard in my life. I can see from the empty seats, I am not the problem in this church. Or we could read it, yeah, you're back and you're the problem. We like the other guy. I like the other guy myself. Man, that was just phenomenal, man. Just he peeled the paint off the wall. That guy is just tremendous. Glad to have Brother and Sister Tisdale with us. And Sharon, I, did I say you were home yet? Did I, I'm, I'm having one of those stroke days. I just, uh, sometimes my brain doesn't work. I just, short-term memory loss or something. Please hold Brother Mike Williams up in prayer. He's had major health issues a year or two ago when he had all this terrible mess with his shoulder and his socket. They had to put a reversed shoulder thing in him so it bends the other way. It was, it was an experimental thing and they put it in and it became diseased and it stayed infected for almost a year and they finally realized they put in a, a, a a defectant shoulder socket from the factory. So they had to cut it all back out and put another one back in and it stopped all the infection and he's just done wonderful for a year. And a couple of weeks ago it all got reinfected again and they dug the old one back out again. And he's not a happy puppy right now. So we need to hold him up in prayer. See, your, your paper cut's not that big. <laughs> Amen. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, now, I don't want to create any problems, but... Uh, the use of translated words, while it gives, in essence, the meaning of what it actually was, they could have chosen, I think, some better words. It, and they didn't violate or do damage to the Word of God. It's just that um, when, when it's a, like the word they use, framed, well, that is the same word that's translated in Hebrews 5, which says, a body thou hast prepared me so they could have used that word instead of the worlds were framed by the word of God it's basically the same understanding but a better picture would be and the worlds were prepared okay I hope I'm not throwing your curve here okay 
And, and the other translation of the word worlds, that, that, that word that's in Hebrews 11 is not the same word that is translated for the material world or interpreted for the cosmos world. The word is, is a Greek word, aeon. And it literally means the ages or dispensations were prepared by the word of God. Now, you, you might think, well, that's just a big deal out of nothing. But no, it's really a big deal out of a big deal. Because we're not talking about the cosmos. And we're not talking about the terra firma. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the ages. And it's listed in plural. So it wasn't say the age. It was the ages. We understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so the things which are seen do not appear by things which do, things were not made by things which do appear the world the world literally the word is age but because it's plural worlds it's ages now this is important because this is my pre-election bible study <laughs> that I've already been told to shut my mouth and don't say nothing about it of which I'd like to say something to you that told me that being on the watchman on the wall, I'm going to lift my voice. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a political rally. I have no right to do that. I do have a mandate to lift my voice in proclamation, protest, warning, and suggestion. Then leave it with you. Okay? I mean, there's no doubt about it. We're facing a monumental election between a corrupt person and a possible clown. And we're stuck with the choice. I'm, I'm going to show you in a few minutes, your vote don't mean nothing. You, you think it does, but it don't mean nothing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read one more verse in the book of Job, chapter 12. Verse 10. I hope I didn't offend you because I know you really think you're going to elect somebody. In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Let me go a little further here. Doth not the ear try words, and the, mouth, and the mouth taste his meat? With the ancient is wisdom, and the length of days and understanding. With him is wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. Behold, he breaketh down and it cannot be built again, regardless of who votes. And he shutteth up a man, and there can be no opening, regardless of who votes. Behold, he withholdeth the waters, and they dry up. Also he sendeth them out, and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. Not that he gives them the feeling to deceive or be a deceiver, but he's got control over them also. He leadeth counselors away spoiled and maketh judges fools. He looseth the bond of kings and girdeth their loins with a girdle. He leadeth princes away spoiled and overthroweth the mighty. Okay, Lord, bless the teaching in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Please don't put up your defense mechanism so fast. I know you actually thought you did something, but you don't. I know I, I cast my ballot and I pray about things, but I do realize according to the book. Now, if you people don't believe the book, then it doesn't matter. But if you believe the book, the, the God of heaven disposes things as he wants to. Now, he may use and manipulate a vote. He may put a thought in somebody's mind or heart. But we didn't do it. Okay. I, I, I want to <laughs> talk to you on perceiving things with a Bible faith. I've taught you three different times at least on what faith is. Faith is taking a risk. Faith is believing God. Faith is having patience in waiting for the things that God has promised. I, I, I want to take us a little bit.
be on there tonight. Did I already pray? No. Lord, bless. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I can't remember. Amen. Uh, and the reason why I said this is my pre-election Bible study is because the whole nation is up in arms. And monumental things are in the offing right now. And uh, I, I have a feeling like whichever way the, the, the election goes, we lose. As, as far as U.S. citizens go. We don't lose as far as citizens of the kingdom of God. That doesn't happen. But I, I just want to run some things by you. Just first, when we read that scripture, it says, by it, talking about faith in God, by it, the elders obtained a good report, okay? Now, the elders, that word translated elders, can also be translated ancients. The elders or the ancients. In fact, it gives a clearer definition of the same people in Hebrews 12 and 1. We are... We are encumbered about by such a great cloud of witnesses. So he's, they're all making reference to the same group of people that walked across the pages of time. These elders, these ancients, these great cloud of witnesses. And what, what we need to learn tonight, and I wish to God I had it under control, but I don't. We need to learn the secret of the elders. Because how they believed and what they believed enabled them to endure so much, to accomplish wondrous things, and watch this, and become God's witnesses to a world that doesn't believe Him. And so any of our trials and our tests and any of our situations, our circumstances that we are forced to face or deal with or don't like or it goes against us God is still looking at us saying I need a witness not, not that I backed you up in what you believe but rather you back me up in the way you live anybody can smile and live real good if it goes their way but if God somehow in his divine providence turns around and deals, if I can use that term, deals you a hand that you wouldn't like to play. And we got to deal with it the best we can. Why? Because he's not looking for us to get answers. He's looking for somebody to become his living witnesses irregardless of how it goes. That's the purpose of the great record of the book of Hebrews 11. After we introduce these preliminary things, then, it, then he starts giving a long list of Abraham and Sarah and this one and that one and Gideon and Samson, Jephthah and Moses. He gives a list of all, but, but you understand that all the things that these wonderful people dealt with, endured, overcame, accomplished, conquered, all flowed out of the faith of the elders. And we need to learn what the secret of that faith is because, because we are living in such mo monumental times and crazy stuff coming down the pike that we're going to need more than this silly name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. I believe in Jesus. God is going to orchestrate things into our lives that don't go our way. He is going to order stuff in our lives that don't make any sense. In fact, sometimes they hurt. They cause questions. We wonder. I prayed. I fasted. I sought God. How come God let this happen? Because we live in a world under divine ordering. Only stupid people think they can order God. Now, we can plead with God and we can pray and sometimes we can get God to show mercy or turn things around like he did with Hezekiah. He had a pronouncement of death and Hezekiah wept and prayed and turned his face to the wall and God saw his tears and heard his voice and said, you move me, okay, I'm gonna give you this many more years. Or when Jonah was swallowed up in the whale's belly and should have drowned there for being a disobedient jerk and said, you know, apparently if God wanted him to die, he could have had a shark give him a ride. He turned around and put him in captivity so he could have a mind change. But remember, he knew what he was supposed to be doing. 
And see, it violated his outlook. Like sometimes I think some of this crazy stuff going on violates my outlook. And maybe yours. Because God wants to show mercy to Nineveh, and Jonah wants God to kill them all. Why? Well, because I'm godly and they ain't. Because I live in a righteous lifestyle and they don't. Kill them all. And when you read that Jonah 4, when he says, Doest thou well to be angry, Jonah? I can't believe the gall of this wacko. Now, I've met some preachers as wacko as him, but that's a wacko preacher. Yeah, I do well. Are you kidding me? God is asking you a question, hoping you'll get your head screwed on right. Are you doing right to be well to, to be mad? Do you do well to be mad? I do well to be mad. Why? Because I didn't have my way. And these people are ungodly and I'm godly. And I told them you were going to bump them off and now you forgave them. You make me mad. And the Lord just looks at them and he said, they got 120,000 people. Can't tell the difference between the right hand and the left hand. And much cattle. Shouldn't I show mercy? Now, you got to watch out because you can become a believer that actually believes, no, don't show mercy. Kill them all. Wipe them all out. Like, like Trump would say, nuke everything. Turn everything into a parking lot. Well, like Hillary, what email? So, we, so we, got, we got some real issues facing us. And when I was praying and studying to try and be a blessing to you folks, I mean, the Lord just whoosh and, and just started talking to me and said, You're, you and your people are getting sidetracked. You're looking at the wrong picture. You're looking at November 8th. November 8th ain't nothing to me. November 8th is everything to you. You think... That if I let wicked, evil people get in control, that I can't work. That I can't give my church the greatest Holy Ghost revival they've had since Pentecost. They think they need the government's help. God is telling somebody, I don't need a government to help me. I don't need a tax plan to help me. I don't need a bailout to help me. I create air. I create gold. I create life. I keep things going. I don't need anybody to believe with me. And now, I hope I'm not, hope I'm not being rude or too rude anyway. I told you about faith is risk and believing God and all this stuff. Now it's time for us to believe the prophetic word of God regardless of what we see. Are you hearing me? One of the things that I believe this writer in Hebrews 11, when he talks about the elders obtained a good report and the wonderful things that they did, we need to grab a hold of what made the, 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 the faith of these elders so powerful and work so well for them. It was because they learned, and we need to learn, not to judge any situation by the obvious. Not to let circumstances down us and drown us and steal our joy. In other words, I, I don't want to be rude. Now, Sharon, you were here when that happens. Stenson, you were here when that happened. When I first was allowed to be the pastor of this church on 39th, now, you may say I'm wrong, but I was behind the pulpit. When the gate is lost, we couldn't have church. Now, we finally got delivered from that after a while, but it was unbelievable. It was like trying to preach to the living dead. I didn't even know who the Gators were. I didn't drink Gator Aid, so I had no idea what it was. But, but there was such an uh, ingrowth of, of allegiance and being fans and what have you that when the Gators got their brains knocked out, I got my brains knocked out. And we tried to have worship and tried to have praise, and I never could figure out. I'd go home and say, Patty, boy, that was... It was tight as a corkscrew in that place. What's going on? He said, the gator's lost. I said, what in the world the gator's got to do with anything? Oh, well, these are worshipers. And the thing they worshiped had a bad day. Now, you're laughing and smiling, but that was 35 years ago. 
We got one bigger than that right now. How are you going to react and respond if you don't get it your way? These people learn not to judge according to circumstances or feelings or appearances of issues, but they believe God's word and they were persuaded of God's integrity and they had confidence in God's truthfulness. And so they just believed, watch, they believed in spite of the hell, the chaos, the dishonesty, the injustice, the wrongness, God's in control. I go a little further. If they nuke America and America's no mayor, no more in three days, God is still in control. And God can still do anything He wants to do anytime. I heard one guy said, God is able of these stones to raise up sons unto Abraham. Sometimes the stuff that we say we believe, God lets us live out in the laboratory of life and see whether we believe it. Now, I, I, I voted in the last two elections of both time. The guy I voted against uh, won. And I tried to keep my joy. And I may be in disagreement with some political programs and stuff, but all that dumb stuff ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost, ain't got nothing to do with the truth, ain't got nothing to do with the church, ain't got nothing to do with the kingdom of God. I'm not trying to turn into a political rally now. I'm just trying to help you a little. God told Samuel, as we've often heard preached, don't look on his countenance, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For the, for the Lord seeth the invisible, and the Lord sees the unseen. Man looks on the appearance. Well, that is a divine principle that still operates today. But we have to understand, although we see the appearance of things, we cannot let the appearance of stuff maul us. Why? Because however it goes, fine. I cannot get up on Tuesday night or Wednesday morning and act like I'm an apostolic atheist. Like somebody stole God's scepter and somebody punched him in the face and somebody fooled him and somebody scammed him. The devil is a liar. There's no such thing as that. He's all wise. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He's absolutely good. He's got a divine plan. He's got a perfect purpose and he can use anybody and anything to accomplish that goal. Now, I enjoy the positive more than I enjoy the negative. Nevertheless, the Lord's not looking for that. He's looking and said, I need a witness. I need somebody to walk through the dark time and say, ain't God good? I need somebody to stand up and say, well, the new regime and the new legislation with God is going to take us to hell in a handbasket. And you walk through and say, ain't God good? I'm not getting much help here. <laughs> you must believe that God's foreknowledge, foreknowledge, has literally set the stage to perform what He desires. And it doesn't matter who wins, who loses, who declares war on who, what happens to the gold standard, what happens to America, what happens to the UN. None of that stuff has anything. To, when God set this thing in place, there wasn't anything. When, when God looked down before there was even time and started setting up the process of what he was going to do and how it was going to end up, he wasn't looking at the UN or the US or Persia or Russia or China. He wasn't looking. Now, they were all going to come into play into his stuff, but you understand. Well, let me, let me try it again. I need, I need to encourage myself right now. Here we go. The Lord liveth. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. 
Never mind who's in the UN. Never mind about the European common market. Never mind what happens in the election. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. He reigns when people are elected or appointed to office who are good and godly and, and holiness-minded, but he reigns when they're evil and stupid and ungodly and wicked. Are you hearing me? Let me go. i got to encourage myself because this is a little tough right here. I need to look at them. Is, uh, am, I in, am I in the movies tonight? Are all those hundreds of thousands of people? Well, I love movie land, TV land. Let me help you here. I, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen his seed begging bread. I've seen nations and governments come and go, up and down, good and bad, but I've never seen God turn his back on the church. I've never seen God let the devil get the upper hand and defeat and destroy the church. No matter what happens in our system, the kingdom of God moves forward. That's why the writer in the book of Hebrews says, we have received a kingdom which cannot be moved and cannot be shaken. That's why Paul wrote to the Thessalonica church and says, be not easily shaken by things that are happening. That's one of the few times in all the epistles he ever used the word shaken. The writer of Hebrews says, you have a kingdom, receive a kingdom that cannot be moved, watch, and cannot be shaken. Amen. Now, see, there's a big difference between the kingdom that can't be shaken and the citizens who get shaken who are part of the kingdom. But it's like God went like this. Kaboom! There's the kingdom. Give it your best shot. You can't shake it. You can't move it. It's going to accomplish my purpose. When it's all over, there's going to be a church. There's going to be a bride. There's going to be a catching away. There's going to be a rapture. There's going to be a coming of the Lord, irregardless what governments do or don't do. I know I'm, 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 I'm talking good here. So you understand that, that the, the faith of the elders was, the secret of it was seeing by hearing. They heard. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So they heard something from God which created pictures for them. And they saw the end. And some of them got to it and some of them didn't get to it. But it didn't matter because they were not seeing by seeing. They were seeing by hearing. If you get your signals from what is obvious and you see, you can get discouraged. Sometimes I look at our nation just uh, scientifically, medically, politically, even religiously or, or morally. Looks like we're going to hell in a handbasket. Fine. The church ain't. When the smoke clears, the church will be strong. The church will be there. There's not anything going to stop the church. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. It doesn't mean hell won't try. It doesn't mean that hell won't attack it. It just means hell don't win. I wish I could get a witness right now that believes that suddenly there'll be a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and there'll be a sound of a trumpet and the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which alive remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. What words? He's coming and I'm going. And what happens in Iran and England and Russia and China or America has no way the power or the wisdom or the knowledge to circumvent that. I heard the master say, I will work, and who will let it? And in the prophet Isaiah said, and I will do all my pleasure. And hell and the governments of the world said, we'll shut you down. He said, not hardly, stupid. I'll do all my. In fact, I'm so great, I'll use your stupidity to advance my kingdom. I'll use your evil to bless my kingdom. I'll use your wickedness to bless. 
because the dismal dark things we have to deal with provide us a platform and opportunity to grow, to glow, and to glorify God. Can't nobody praise God like somebody who came through something. You can sing with the music and clap your hands with the preacher, but you go through a low time. You go through a dark spell. You go through a time when you almost got your brains knocked out, and you come out on the other side. You can sing that song. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, can nobody praise God? like people who have come through problems. Yeah. Hallelujah. Stay, stay with me. I got, I got to go fast here. Now, I want nobody walking out here to say, Brother Arnold turned this into a political rally. I did not do that. I'm trying to impregnate this wonderful church with words and thoughts and themes of hope and trust and confidence. Yeah, we all want certain things and we want certain legislation, fine. But, but, it's like the Lord spoke to me. And if I decide not to give it to you, so what? I can still use empty-headed fools. I can still use self-serving jerks. I can still use evil to make it praise me. What do you think I did with Rome? What do you think I did with Babylon? What do you think I did with Egypt? Do you understand what Egypt was? Now you might think it was the slave market for Israel. No, it wasn't. It was an incubator for God's process. He told Jacob, I wrote the scripture down, he said, I'm going to have you and your people go into Egypt, and there you will be 400 years. Watch what he says. And there will I make of thee a great nation. So the place of slavery and mistreatment and government injustice and unkindness and evil and wickedness, God took all that together and said, watch me make a nation out of this. And, and in one night, he brought an entire nation out. The same thing's going to happen with the church. We may have to go through some stuff we don't like. But when he gets ready, he can bring the church out. He can bring the church through. Now, I've been, I've been praying and praying, and I've been trying to be as kind as I could to God to give him my advice and what I feel he needs to do. And he's been so wonderful. He's been kind enough, Phil. He listened to me. I don't know whether he went, <laughs> oh, oh, Jeffrey thinks he's got to get that guy in or he's got to get that gal in. He said, I, I can accomplish my purpose with neither one of them. Look how much I've done already with all the crooks that have been in government for 200 years. Remember, the Bible said Jesus Christ was crucified. Crucified. Watch. By the determinate counsel of God. The determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Watch. While they were in bondage to Rome, God used that bondage and that mistreatment to give us saviorship. You ready for this? Jesus Christ was crucified under Roman rule. He did not defeat Rome's power over people. He did something greater. He defeated Satan's and he defeated sin's. It doesn't matter what government you have to live under. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm talking good. Now, now, just bear with me just for a minute because I got a lot of scripture so you don't think I'm some political nut. I want to show you a scripture that the Lord brought to my mind. Proverbs uh, 16. Man, my poor eyes. 1633, I think it is, 16, yeah, here it is. So I was praying, and the Lord just dropped this in my spirit. He said, the lot is cast into the lap. Now, what is that in English? The people cast their ballots. Watch. 
but the disposing of it is of the Lord. That's how they voted for things in those days. They cast a lot. And he said the lot is cast into the lap as if you have control. And then the Lord takes all the lots and goes, you're elected, you're not. See, we, I didn't even get a moan that time. I didn't even get a groan. And, and I thank God that as Americans we're allowed to vote for things. That's fine. But you've got to believe what this book says. But the disposing thereof is of the Lord. If an election works in alignment with God's process and purpose and procedure, he'll let it work even though we may not like it. Why? Because he's working toward a goal we don't know anything about. And he knows exactly what it's going to take to get that purpose to reach its achievement. I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, I really did. I thought that was really good. In fact, I thought it was better than you, you reacted to. <laughs> you see, what, what this thing about the secret of the elders is, the ability to perceive because of understanding and grasping and believing the Word of God, that, it, that the things that happen, please hear me, don't happen by chance, accident, or evil having its way. Now that last one's the hard one. Because I hear all this silly stuff everywhere, you know, just if the righteous are fast and pray, they can, oh, give me a prayer. You never heard anything about Daniel and the three Hebrews unless God decided to let him suffer in Babylonian captivity. Now watch, he put his men under a vile, nasty, godless government. And then turned around and says, shine, boys. See, you and I are going to get a chance to live out what we tell each other in the church house. said, well, that crazy thing went nuts. Well, maybe so, but God ain't nuts. God, please hear me. God has never lost his scepter. He has never given away his authority. He has never been deposed. He's never been thrown off the throne. He's almighty God. He has declared the end from the beginning. The things that are not as though they were. He knows how to get us to where he wants us to be. And only he knows what it will take to develop us. Now, I wish I get someone honest enough to answer me. Sometimes I think I'm developed enough. Boy, I, I, got, I got three amens just then. Uh, sometimes I think I've learned enough about God. Don't need no more crisis. Don't need no more tests. Me and you, we got something going on. I'll tell you one thing, if poverty has killed these thousands, success has killed these hundreds of thousands. Don't you get it? You, you glow better, you shine better, the darker it is. I've heard all this crazy stuff in the newspapers. Well, if this one gets elected, we're leaving the town. We wish, I wish you would have left before. Well, if this one gets in, then I'm, I'm, I'm just going, what is your problem? You're so anti-God. God is never reactionary. We are reactionary. And getting to be like him is tough. I mean, it's easy for someone not to be reactionary when you're all wise, all knowing, and all powerful. Me, I'm just some little weak guy here gets a headache. I shouldn't have said anything about politics. I've killed this. <laughs> okay, let me, let me. The Gators are here. <laughs> Biblical faith believes what's written in Nahum chapter 1, verse 3. You need to underline that in your Bible. It's, here's what Nahum 1 and 3 says. And the Lord has his way in the whirlwind. Ain't nobody else.
else and nothing else gets their way in a whirlwind, in a storm, in whirling wind, in blowing things. You, ain't nobody in control of that. And God steps in the middle of the whirlwind and says, yeah, I got all this under control right here. He has his way in the whirlwind, which is a biblical way of saying in crisis, in catastrophe, in circumstances that are negative, in things that I felt that I prayed against. I prayed against so many people and so many politicians and they all are doing well. I should have left them alone. Maybe they would have just been lost. Lord, shut her down. Lord, shut him down. Dear God, shut that guy. That guy couldn't tell the truth standing on the Bible looking at Jesus. Lord, get rid of that bum. And it's like the Holy Ghost sings me and says, I, I put that bum in for a reason. Now, when God says that to you, he doesn't, maybe he doesn't say, he said to me, when he says that to you, you, you got to be careful that you don't react and say, a reason? What reason would you have that I don't know? Well, I put him in for this office because I'm going to use him to desecrate the whole nation and bring it to his knees because I'm setting the stage, what? For what? For the Antichrist, and you're leaving. You want to leave, but you want to live while everything's just hokey-dory and everything's just fine. Remember, nobody left Egypt's bondage until they cried out. As long as they were enjoying Egypt and they were doing fine, they didn't ask to leave. As long as they settled down in Babylon and they were making money and becoming merchants and they were getting by, they were fine. But when God turned up the heat, all of a sudden the people that should not have been there, that have a different attitude, have a different character, have a different nature, have a different purpose and destiny, God just turned the heat up, tightened the screws, and they said, get us out of here. Why? Because Egypt was never to be their home. It was to be an incubator. This world is not supposed to be our home. It's supposed to be an incubator to produce a great nation of Holy Ghost people. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go a little further. Did I give you, did I give you a Hebrew? No, I guess I didn't. I gave it to myself. Uh, Hebrews, uh, uh, let me go over here. Hebrews 10. You're not in Hebrews 10, are you? I'm here. I'm there. I'm here right now. I'm here. 10.35. Okay? 10.35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. After you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Now, listen. Please hear me. TV land, listen to Uncle Jeffrey. Listen to me. The purpose of the of the few chapters before that great hall of fame that takes place, the writer of the book of Hebrews was trying to help people to be delivered from two things, apostasy and walking back into Judaism. That's why he writes in Hebrews, he says, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in them. See, the, the, the New Testament Jews that had embraced Christianity, they've been ostracized by their own Jewish community, community, their own family, and now they were under pressure and they were being persecuted and prosecuted, and many of them were turning back to Judaism. They were becoming discouraged and dismayed. The same thing holds true for those of us who claim to be New Testament Christians. We must guard against apostasy. We must not turn our back on the things of God we know just because all hell breaks loose. I heard the book say, faithful is he who called you who will also do it. Now that, that shouts and preaches real good until all hell breaks loose. And then sometimes it's hard to say, how can you say you're faithful? Look at the hell I'm going through. It's almost like God says, well, I ain't got nobody else to trust the hell with. All the rest of them are Pentecostal wussies. The wind always blows at the back of their neck. They never walk into the rain. They don't have to climb the mountain. They don't have to dig deep. They just believe in Jesus. Let me 
just try it again. I'm all over this book here. I'm so sorry. I'm just all over this book. I got so many scriptures I wanted to share with you. He said, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but unto them that believe to the saving of the soul. What does that mean? You got to believe when everything is against you. When everything you've tried to change. Don't you get it? Human governments have no power in the church. None whatsoever. This church is the God's divine government. It is run by the power of the Holy Ghost. It is covered by the canopy of the blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus is on it. Now, we are, we are a group inside a bigger group. And the bigger group may decide to do this, 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 and this. That's okay. But it has no way to direct the church. It has no way it can affect the church unless the church thinks the government runs the church. It doesn't do that. And all these wonderful people that are listed in Hebrews 11 go on record to show us that if you have the faith of the elders, the mysterious, wonderful faith of the elders, the ancients, the great cloud of witness, you can go through anything. Now you read Hebrews 11 and read all these different wonderful people that they put in there. Ain't none of them had no rosy posy stuff like Pentecostals do. I mean, if someone looks at you bad, you're out of church for three weeks. These, these people were hunted. They were mauled. They were humiliated. They were embarrassed. They were chased. They were prosecuted, persecuted. They were skinned alive. They were put in dog bags. They, they were in caves. Read, read Hebrews 11 and Hebrews 12. It's unbelievable. And we're going to stand in the judgment with them. And when we stand up, we'll say, Whoa, look at the scars. Look at the brutalization. Look at the mauling. Have you seen my paper cut? My paper cut. That paper cut was serious. And these guys had their lands and their homes and possessions pilfered and stolen. They had no safe place. They had no refuge to go to. They, they just didn't belong anywhere. And yet they keep walking. Why? Because they have seen the promise afar off. And they felt like the promise outshone the problem. And the promise was greater than the predicament. The worst thing that could have ever happened to the church was that horrible, ignorant thing that happened with that foolish man, Constantine, when he filled the church full of heretics and heres heresy people and unbelieving wackos and made Christianity the religion of the government and of the nation. And then he became like a bishop and he taught the church what it should do and what it shouldn't do. And once you got that political stuff in the church, now you got a church that's governed by the government. Listen carefully. I thank God for human government that's kind and fair. I don't particularly like government that's not fair. Nevertheless, all things are of God. That was kind of weak. Hezekiah was being invaded by a massive army. You read 2 Chronicles 32. He turned around, he built up the wall of Milo, and he fixed the things that were damaged. Remember, you don't usually inspect and fix things that are broken down that you tolerate until you got trouble. Trouble's a gift from God. Trouble helps us say, uh-oh, I've been letting some things slip, and I've been letting some things go. So trouble isn't God's punishment on our lives. It's a wake-up call. And when Hezekiah saw this great army going in, he started talking to them, and he built these walls up, made shields. Nothing wrong with trying to prepare and be protected for something. Nothing wrong with that. But then he turned around and he said, Now look, with them is the arm of flesh. With us is the Lord God Almighty. He spake comfortably unto his people. I've always loved this last part of that scripture. And the people rested upon the words of King Hezekiah. If there ever was a time the church needs to rest on the king's word, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I'll never put on you more than you can bear. With every test, every trial, I'll make a way of escape. We need to rest on it now. 
Because the unshakable foundation of God's integrity and truth is the only thing whereby we can rest upon. Why? Because the whole world's gone screwy. It's nuts. It's wacko. It's lost its direction. It's lost its morals. It's lost its fear of God. Look what's happened in America. My God, we've become a whorehouse, a cesspool, a bunch of drunks and druggies and entertainment freaks. God's being railroaded out of everything. You can't even play in a football game. You can't even hold up the set of Ten Commandments. Come on, man. The signs are on the wall. God is trying to say, get your eyes off your government and get your eyes on me. I am going to take you through regardless of what the government does. That's why Jesus told Pilate, my kingdom's not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, would my servants fight? My kingdom runs different than this. So here he is. He started a kingdom and a church under Roman dominion. And it wasn't Roman's hate, Rome's hate or Israel's rejection. It was the divine counsel of God that says, this is what I plan to do. I'm going to do it right in your face and right under your noses. I don't need your stupid government. I don't need your armies. I don't need your navies. Listen, baby, I got so many weapons at my disposal. I can talk to flies. I can talk to locusts. I can talk to swarms of bees. I, I can release AIDS. I can release diseases on you people. I can shut up the heavens that there ain't no rain. I can cause the wind to blow again like it did years ago in the great dust bowl. I can shrivel everything up in a nation. In a, in a matter of a few moments, I can dry up your entire economy. That's why the Bible said they're having all that hell and chaos in Egypt when the plagues were going on. But in Goshen, where God's people were, a dog didn't even wag his tongue against them. You're not kidding us yet. You're still waiting to vote your guy or gal. You're, you're missing it. You're missing it. The lots are cast into the lap. But the disposing thereof is of God. True biblical faith enables us to endure things, to strengthen us so that we can suffer if need be, to conquer, or to just somehow, some way, wait patiently. Let me just show you a few scriptures here. Right, Brother Hino, did you get some scriptures to read? Just, just read this. I'm not doing so good to move you right now. I really thought this place would be jumping right now. I did. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not for your friend Obama. I'm not for the, the wicked witch from the West, Hillary. And I'm not for the bombshell guy, Trump. I mean, I think they're all nuts. Fine, but that's all we got to play with. That's what we got. I told you three weeks ago, I'm going to tell you again tonight. It is my firm conviction that God showed me that the two people that are being candidates for the presidency are a revelation of how low and bad and far America has gone from God. As if God said, this is the two best you guys can produce. And maybe even with that stupid stuff, God is saying, I did that on purpose. I did that on purpose. I've got a goal and I've got a program and ready. If you just wake up and understand that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, say it the Lord. Oh, boy. The minute I mentioned that word political, you people just went. <laughs> Brother Arnold's going to tell me who to vote for. No, I ain't. No, I ain't. That's your bag. You vote for it and then make sure you're going to give God an answer why you voted for them. Just make sure whoever you vote for, they're not pro-queer, they're not pro-fag, they're not pro-lesbian. They're not pro-transvestitism. They're not pro-same-sex marriage. They're not pro-abortion. Because that stuff is vile. That stuff is evil. I don't care what the government says or what the Supreme Court says. That don't matter. That is not the Supreme Court. He is the Supreme Court. His word is law. He rules and reigns. Uh, 
If you can accept this, you sweet people, I love you, I care about you. God rules and reigns when all hell's breaking loose in your life. Nothing upsets the throne of God. Nothing steals his mighty scepter of authority from him. He rules and reigns when all hell's breaking loose and all craziness has happened. And he ruled and reigned when Hitler was murdering six million people. He ruled and reigned. When your life and my life seem out of control, it ain't out of his control. Why? The predetermined counsel and foreknowledge of God. I allow this to happen for you to go through this. I allow this player and this player. Why would God allow godless, moronic, stupid, foolish people lead a nation? Because he's got a plan. We somehow think that if we get always, we can get Holy Ghost filled people baptized in Jesus' name in the White House and all of them talked in tongues when they had court. That, that we would have a great time. You, 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 you can't shop in a knife with butter. It takes a stone. It takes abrasion. If you don't hear me, remember what I'm just going to tell you. Adversity, the adverse, may not be a curse. It may be God's opportunity to grow. Now, some of us here, God help us, you don't, you don't want to grow. That's your problem. But, but God wants us to grow, and he wants us to blossom. And he wants us not to be intimidated and not to be afraid and not to be anxious. And I haven't passed all those classes with flying colors. Sometimes I got the dunce cap on me. Sometimes I worry about things I shouldn't worry about. I tell you, don't worry. Don't be apprehensive. Don't be filled with anxiety. And then I go home and eat my fingernails and worry about what's going on. with the Because we're just people. See, it's one thing to receive good advice. It's another thing to appropriate and assimilate that into lifestyle. I, I, I'm almost there. Just hold on. I'm almost there. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I think I gave it to you. Uh, Psalms uh, 75. Psalms 75. Just read that. But God is the judge. Yeah. He put it down one, set it up, set it up another. Stop. It's the end of election day. Now, I know, Frank, you thought you did that, but you really didn't do that. I cast my ballot, and I thought I, well, I prayed over this, and this is what I think I need to do. But it's God that goes like this. He counts. No, that's too many for him. That's too many for her. No. No. You win. And if it goes our way, we turn around and say, yeah, I prayed. I fasted. I sought the will of God. Yeah, right, right. Let me try it again. The lots are cast into the lap, but the Lord does the disposing of it. Why? Because he's got something greater than this moment. He's got... Ah. I'm not a liar. I'm not a hypocrite. I hate injustice. I hate immorality. I do. I hate this crazy Obama perversion stuff. I hate it with a passion. But God has allowed it somehow for something to happen in this country and in this world. It should not defeat us. It should develop us. It should somehow entrench us in the things that are righteous and that are holy. Not that we condemn and condemn people that practice this, this, this. That's not the issue. God has allowed this guy to do some of the most ungodly, vile trash that anybody's ever done. Well, fine. I hate it. I don't, Frank, I don't like it. Put your gun away, Frank. I don't like it. I don't like it. How come 3% of the people get all the oil? They keep squeaking. All the laws being passed out, all has to do with homos, lesbians, fags, queers, transvestites. Nothing for normal people. And God is allowing that to happen. And I keep trying to help him, but he won't listen to me. I keep trying to show him this is not good. As if he didn't know that. How many kings can you find in the Bible that reigned in Israel and in Judah 
that were jerks, that were ungodly, that were evil. The Jezebels and the Ahads, the Manassehs that burned his own children, people that God allowed to be appointed to be leaders. Why? Because in all that dark leadership, God had a nucleus that was growing. So that when the next king, he had something ready to build a kingdom with. Baby, this, this thing ain't over. We are in a divine process. You've got to believe me. We are in a divine ordering. Read for me, Reb. <laughs> God is the judge. He put it down one, set it up another. Now, yeah, now, see that? He put it down one, set it up another. I thought you did that, Frank. You voted. You put down one and you put up another. No. No. He, he took my ballot and your ballot and said, don't count. I don't care how many people vote. Before the election, God has already said, you got it, you lost. Why? Because it ain't about you two loonies. It's about the purpose. It's about what I'm trying to do towards the end time. I've got to bring all nations to their knees. I've got to bring a conspiracy against Israel. I was, I was praying the other day. I, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm in the movies right now, right? I was praying the other day, and I got to talking to the Lord about this, this foolish man that's at the helm right now. He's just really foolish man. And he does a lot of stupid things, and that's fine. But one of the dumbest things that I ever heard him do was when he went on national TV and international radio and told Mr. Netanyahu, Mr. Netanyahu, you have no friend in my, in my administration or this White House. And the Jews need to learn they have no friend in me or in this administration. I am for the Muslims, and I am for the Palestinians. When he said that, my hair went straight. When he said that, it went straight, and I went right to Genesis 12 and 3. Whosoever blesses Abraham, them will I bless. Whosoever curses Abraham, them will I curse. I said, Lord... This guy has gone beyond just being very stupid and ignorant and foolish. Now he's gone into spiritual principles that he don't know squat about. And he has violated something that's been in place for thousands and thousands of years. Now, Lord, I'm appealing to you. We need some leadership that will befriend Israel because our friendship with Israel guarantees the smile of God on this nation. So I thought I had a good argument, Travis. I, I, I gave him scripture verse so he, he knew I knew the Bible. And it's like the Lord just quickened back to me. He said, I know. But I ordained him to be at leadership at this time. And I knew exactly what he was going to say and what he was going to do. Why, why would you do that? Because I am setting the stage for the Antichrist. He said, I am setting the whole stage nationally and internationally because I am going to bring all this vileness and corruptness together so they'll finally end up going against Israel. And before that happens, you're coming home. And I'll be honest with you, I'll tell you right to your face, I still don't like it. ask you something. How long, it, how long has it been since some of you prayed for Obama to get the Holy Ghost? Pardon me, was it something I said? In other words, Jesus didn't die for him. He only died for us nice guys. I remember some of you guys when you weren't so. In fact, since some of you have been saved, you ain't been so nice. Ask yourself, does, does, does Jesus want Obama in the church? I'm running late. I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time right now because I have a divided house. Yeah, dude, you, 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 you think you've got to be politically correct. You can be politically correct and totally spiritually stupid. Nothing matters but the kingdom of God. 
Nothing matters but the will of God. Nothing matters but the pleasure and purpose of God. Nothing. And it doesn't matter what God uses, who he uses, circumstance he uses to accomplish the goal that he set up when he first started. But what happens is when sometimes those uh, uh, accomplishment of those goals, they become offensive and irritating to us. Because we look at that and say, that should not be. You know what we say? We're Americans. And God seems to say, you're what? Does that affect me? You, you, you're wearing John Wayne's undershirt. That, that, that affects me? Because you're an American, I need to adjust my plan? Psalms 97 and 1. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. The Lord reigneth. Let the... Well, I, I was... I wish I could sing pretty like you can sing. I, I was going to call my Bible study something that some of you old timers remember. Frank, you should remember this. You're not that spiritual. You, you got to remember. Phil, you got to remember this. Brother Shell Hart, you surely remember this. He's got the whole world in his hand. 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 He's got the little bitty baby in his hand. He's got the little bitty baby in his hand. He's got the little bitty baby in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. Here we go. He's got you and me, brother, in his hand. He's got you and me, sister, in his hand. He's got you and me, brother, in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the governments and the liars and the cheats and the whoremongers and the drug addicts and the fags and the queers and the Twinkies and the politicians and the Republicans and the Democrats and the backslidden preachers and the cold indifferent churches in his hand. He's got us in his hand, Phil. He said, can nothing and nobody take us out of his hand. <laughs> Give me just a few minutes. It's 10 minutes till and I'm, I ain't got started yet. I thought that's a pretty good song. You remember that song? I just go around as a kid singing that song. He got the whole world in his hand. Had like two verses to it, never said nothing. Little bitty babies and you and me, brother and sister. That was it. Mil million seller. Here we are, 2016, all hell's breaking loose. Most of these politicians couldn't tell the truth standing on the Bible, looking at Jesus. They don't know what to do. The economy's gone crazy. Nothing was going. And the church's going by. He got the whole world. He got the whole world. He's got the economy in his hand. He's got the gold in his hand. He's got the jewels in his hand. He's got everything in his hand. He's got your money in his hand. He's got your time in his hand. He's got your life in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got today in his hand. He's got tomorrow in his hand. He's got yesterday in his hand. He's got everything in his hand. Woo! Ain't I right, man? I'm trying a little bit more here. Go ahead. He was reading something for me. 75. Is that what you read? For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he right. poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. 
Now you got to hear what he just said. There is a cup in the hand of the Lord. Don't you ever believe that anybody gets by. Don't you ever believe that. There's a cup in the hand of the Lord. When he gets ready, he'll just pour it out. When he gets ready to make the wicked drink it, phew, they can't keep their mouth from it. He's going to make them drink it. That's what he told Abraham. He said, in, in the 400th year after you've been in bondage, I will then judge the people that have made you slaves. Don't you ever think anybody gets by. Don't you think that because Babylon was one of the greatest powers of the earth, don't you worry about that. I've got the medial Persians coming here in just a little bit, and they're going to just take care of that place. And after they come, then I'm going to have the Greeks come. And after the Greeks come, I'm going to have the Romans come. Because any time I decide to take somebody down, can nobody stop me. Any time I want to put somebody up, can nobody stop me. I hate to tell you this, and he's on your side. And if God be for you, it does not matter who or what is against you. If you have the faith of the elders, the ancients, the faithful good witnesses, you can endure anything. You can overcome anything. You can receive supernatural strength to accomplish things. It's that kind of faith that we need. The faith that has heard what God said and gets its signals from what it heard and not what it sees. Give me just a few minutes and I'll be done. I'm not, I'm not done. I'm just going to stop. I'm not done. You got, you got another scripture for me? The Lord uh, reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Yeah. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Watch this. Proverbs 21 and 1 it said, and the hand, watch, and the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, so he turneth it any way he will. Now wait a minute. Let's get it straight. I don't care if you're president, you're a representative, I don't care if you're a general superintendent. I, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. You gotta, I don't care whether you're a good king or a bad king. Whether you're a godly king or you're a moron. Your, hand, your heart is in the hand of the king. Watch. And as the rivers of water, so he turneth it. Turneth what? The heart that's in his hand. Whithersoever he will. What? Uh, you're a dirt bag. You're a sleaze bag. You're going to hell anyway. You're not in covenant. You're lost forever. But I could use you. Well, the election was rigged. It was a scam. She got in. He got in. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And however he wants to turn that heart, he don't ask nobody's permission. He doesn't call for an election or a recount. He just goes. I, I got another scripture I need you to read for me, Doc. Uh, Isaiah 45, I think it was Isaiah 45. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. Hold it, hold it. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus, whose right hand I have held. To wait a minute, wait a minute. Cyrus is not in covenant with God. Listen carefully. Big difference between God using you and you being in covenant with God. See, there are people that God uses for things that think they're saved and they're lost as hell is hot. Because you need to be in covenant with God. Not just believe or you... Remember, Cyrus was a pagan. Cyrus was a heathen. He was not in covenant with the God of Israel. But the Lord turns around and he says, uh, Say to my anointed Cyrus. Anointed? Sure, I can anoint bad people to do good things. I can use vulgar, vile people to accomplish good things. Didn't change their status at all. I just used them. Surely as the Lord used Balaam's donkey, he can use lots of other donkeys. It's real easy. Don't tell me the donkey was saved. 
Watch this. Go ahead. It said, the right hand I have holden, the subdued nations before him, right? I'll loose the loins of kings, open before him the two lead doors, and the gates shall not be shut. I got a little more to go. Go ahead. Two, three, four, and five. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass, cut in sunder the bars keep, of keep iron. Keep going, Doc. You're doing great. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden well, riches. I'm going to preach on that sometime. Remember that when I do that. I want to know what the treasures of darkness are. The hit, Because all the darkness I've been through, I ain't found no treasure. I find trash and junk in me. I get in that darkness. I'm looking for them treasures, and all I do is bang into the wall. I'll find out what that means someday. Go ahead. The hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord which calleth thee by name, am the God of Israel. Right. For not, not your God. I'm the God of Israel. I'm not your God. For You're Jacob, just my servant because I got a plan. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee. Now watch this next part. Though thou hast not known me. Woo! Anointed. Blessed. Use of God. And you don't even know God. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is none beside me. I girded thee though, though thou, thou hast not, not known, known me. me. Now if that scripture ever fit two people for the candidacy, it fits now. Now I'm going to let it sink. I'm over. Hello TV audience, stay with me. God called Cyrus his anointed, and that I would use you for my purpose. He's got these people running for president. He's going to anoint one of them for his purpose. Not because they please him, but because he's got a plan. Boy, it is so quiet right now. I need another scripture, Doc. How about 20, uh, uh, 44, verse 24? Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars. <laughs> hey, you got hope. Whoever gets in, he's going to frustrate the tokens of the liars. And maketh diviners mad. That turneth wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolish. <laughs> that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messenger. That saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Ju Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the de decayed places thereof. That saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up the rivers. That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Even say unto Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple the foundation shall be laid. Hey, and he doesn't know God. And he's not in covenant with God. Come on, be encouraged. God can use loonies. God can use godless people. God can use anti-God people. Why? Because he puts a bridle in their mouth and their heart is in his hand. And if they go to do something that's not in alignment with his, con his course, he just goes, whoa, 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 right over here, back right over here, right over here. You got to get this. This is so cool. I'm going to sleep good tonight. You're not getting it. All right, let me try it again. You know what I feel coming up from you sweet people? I don't care what God says. Bless God, I'm going to get somebody elected I want. Oh, shut up. Don't be that stupid. The Lord raises up. And the Lord puts down. He don't ask your advice. I'll go a little further. Jeremiah, I got Jeremiah 18 and 7. And you go to Daniel 2 and we'll finish. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up 
and to pull down and to destroy it. Now watch. JC, the minute I say, you're out of here, bub. I'm finished with you. You're a piece of trash. It's done. But if that nation that I, that I give that prophetic declaration to, if that nation, watch what he says. But if, if that nation do evil in my sight and obey not my voice, I'll repent of the good that I was going to do for them, and I won't do it. And I'll frame evil against them. But if they do what I told them to do, I will keep my word to them. But what this is what got me. The word that got me was at what instant I decide it's over. It's over. I don't care what you do with the UN. I don't care what you do with the House of Representatives. I don't care what you do with the local level of government. When I decide, you're out of here. See, now, this is supposed to be a Pentecostal church. You're acting like the First Baptist and the Second Presbyterian. If I told you the truth, you ought to say something. Amen. See, you're, you're acting like now, like, no, I, I, no, I'm going to take care of this election. You're dumb. Yes, contribute what you can. Pray what you can. Cast your belt. But the disposing of it is of the Lord. So whatever the outcome is, you're going to have to say, the Lord reigneth. The Lord reigneth. God is in charge of it all. He can make evil people do his will. He can make corrupt people accomplish his purpose. He doesn't need the government's favor. We need the king's favor. That's the only thing we need. Okay? I, I got a couple more scriptures, but he's got to go. You got to read that scripture for me wherever you are, Doc. Re, 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 uh, then Daniel. was the secret. This is, this is the one that I want to get to. I hope I'm not offending you people. I feel like I'm in a political rally. Like This is like anti-God people. Who does God think he is? I'm an American. You better be quiet. He's not impressed with America at all. God doesn't make decisions to please Americans. We've only been around 200 years. He's been around before years was. He's seen massive countries and empires rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. Now, I don't want us to get wiped out, but at the same time, we ain't in charge. All we can do is pray for the divine favor and the will of God. I'm not getting much help here. Somehow tells me you still think, I don't care what God says, I am determining this election, bless God. No, you're not. What I say goes, you're nuts. If the election votes come in and it doesn't go the way God wants, he just throws those ballots away. The disposing of it is of the Lord. What I'm trying to help you with tonight is don't eat your fingernails to the elbow and worry yourself into an excedrin headache. Whatever happens Tuesday, the Lord's purpose is going to be accomplished somehow, some way. It's going to be accomplished. Let, let him just read the scripture. It's, I know it's five after nine, and I'm not half done. I'm so sorry. But this, is, this has got a hold of me so bad. This, is, this, has got, this has just been pounding in my chest for two days. Like, tell my people not to worry about anything. If I let godless, filthy, dirty, nasty, lying, deceiving people take your leadership, don't you ever think that their heart is not in my hand? That I can squeeze it and turn it and make them do what I want done? You know, sometimes I don't think we Pentecostals absolutely believe in the divine sovereignty of God. We somehow think we can override him, punch him in the face, and tell him to behave. You ain't going to do it. We ain't going to do it. He already has the outcome planned. He already knows what's coming down the next nine months, the next two years. He already knows it. All he's doing is orchestrating, engineering, ordering things for the end result. 
That's it. Well, read this for me, Rev. I'm sorry to keep you so long. Uh, no, uh, 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 video audience, please forgive me. I'm struggling with the living dead. Don't, don't, don't look at them. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to you, old living audience. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. You know, Dan Nebuchadnezzar's had a dream, and he can't figure out what the dream is, and they asked all the magicians, and they couldn't tell him either. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel. Read. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name, of, the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge yeah. to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and the secret things. Yes. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and, and the light, light dwelleth, dwelleth with, with him. Yeah. Now, wait, I got, I got some more here. I know I do. Uh, you went 19 through 22? Yes, sir. Okay, read four. You went through 19 through 22? Yes, sir. Okay, you're probably right. I'm wrong. Let me try it again. Yeah, you did. Go ahead. Go. I got one more for you. I gave you another scripture. Four? Chapter four? Yes? No? I gave you chapter four? No? Four, sixteen, and seventeen? I'll do it myself. Let his heart be changed yeah. from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him. That's what I want. Read. And let seven times let seven times pass over him. Yeah. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand of the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know. Here, that, here's what I want you to get. Here we get. Here's your, here's your election results right now. Read. To the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Stop. It's over. The Most High ruleth in the kingdoms of men. And he even setteth over them the basest of men. God can use trash and produce treasure. God can use corruptness and produce cleanness. God can use depravity and bring Christian disciples to pass. That angel that wanted to tell Nebuchadnezzar, is going to let you go crazy and you're going to lose your throne, but your throne is still guaranteed. Until you understand and realize that the Lord God Almighty ruleth in the kingdoms of men, watch, and setteth over those kings even the basest of men. Basest. Vile. Hey, I, I, you, you guys worried about your White House? Look, I, watch me. I'll just put trash there. Watch me do my work with the trash. Okay, I, I've, I've kept you too long. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Stenson, I'm so sorry. You were against this political rally. I know what you told me. I understand that. And I try not to turn into a political rally. I'm trying to help you folks. You need to understand. You need to sleep well tonight. He's in charge. He's on the throne. He's going to do what pleases him. That's it. Vote for who you want to. Pray for who you want to. But when it all comes done, be witnesses Amen. of the faith of the elders Amen. that trust what they've heard and not what they see. Amen. Come on, stand, stand with me right now, okay? Thank you, Brother Hino, for being so kind. I, uh, here's, here's all I've tried to say for an hour and five minutes, JC. I could have summed it up with this. We could have went home. You ready? Here's what it is. Dun -dun 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 -dun. The Lord God rules, dun -dun 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 -dun. and the Lord God overrules. Deal with it. Maybe I need to go back. He's got the whole world in his hand. Lord, bless everybody. Forgive all the sour pusses. Forgive all the political wackos. Forgive all the people that somehow think that they're in charge. I do thank you for the privilege to vote as an, as an American, and I have done that. But I do realize that though the lots be cast into the lap, the disposing thereof is of the Lord. I 
pray that you'd help us, Lord, and help me to sing better than I do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Go with God. And I don't need any political fallout. Thank you.